I'm going to show you how to set up DFS namespaces. So to start, I'm logged on to my server, which has my file share, which I've got in a separate volume as the E drive. And I've got a shares folder, which has my subfolders. So to start, I'm going to go to manage and then add roles and features to install the DFS namespaces role. I'm going to select role based or feature based installation. Select the server, which has my file share on it. Under file and storage services, and then file and iSCSI services, we're going to tick the DFS namespaces and then press add features and then do next, next, and then install. Now that the role has been finished installing, we can press close and go to tools and then DFS management. Within DFS management, we can expand namespaces and it's currently blank because we don't have any namespaces. So we can right click and do new namespace. In the new namespace wizard, we can select the server which we're going to host the namespace. Ideally, you will just set this as your file server or whatever server is hosting your file share. Uh, for me, it's currently on DC01. I'm going to select that and press OK. Now we need to specify what we actually want to call our namespace. You can call this whatever you want. The only thing you'll need to be careful is, is you'll want to give it a different name than any of your shares, because it will create a share with the name that you give it. So my existing share shared folder is called shares. So I'm just going to call it that. So I'm not going to call it that. I'll just call it DFS. And then press edit settings. The next thing you want to check is where it will store the DFS roots folder. So by default, it puts it on the E drive, sorry, the C drive, which is fine because it doesn't actually store any data in this folder. It just stores the shortcuts to the actual folders. So it's, it'll be less than one megabyte of data. So it's fine to have it on the C drive. The only problem is, is that when you map the DFS share, it'll show the file st It'll show the storage size of the share as the C size of the C drive that the DFS roots folders on. So ideally you'll want to move that to whatever drive your data is on. So in my case, it's the E drive. So I'm just going to change C to E and then leave everything else as default. We can then press next. Here we can select the type of namespace as this is connected to an active directory domain we're just going to leave it as domain name domain based namespace and leave windows server 2008 mode enabled as when they released windows server 2008 they made some changes to improve the performance and how it works so we'll leave that enabled then press next here we can review the settings and then just press create now that that's been created, we can press close and then go over to our namespace. Now to access the namespace, all you need to do is browse to, oh sorry, go to properties of the namespace, copy the folder, which will be your local Active Directory domain name, backslash whatever um, DFS name you gave the share. So we just browse to it. We can open the namespace and we can see it's currently blank. That's because we haven't linked any folders. Now to actually link the folders, you come over to the namespace, right click and do new folder. We can start linking folders. So in my file share, I've got three different folders. I've got an accounts folder, a HR folder and a tech folder. So I'm just going to create one, create a, namespace folder for each one. So if we come back here, we can do accounts and then press add. And then under the shares, we can just press our accounts folder and then OK and then OK. So now the accounts folder is linked to the namespace. So if we go back to our DFS share, we can see that the accounts folder is now there. And if we go to it, it will take it to the same accounts folder 
as is in our shares. And if we can create files and folders, they will appear in both locations. So what I'll do is just create the other two shares. So we'll do new folder again. We have HR, add, browse, and select our HR share. And then right click new folder, add our tech share, name it tech. And there we go, our three folders are added. And they should be showing in our namespace, which they are. Now what I'm going to do is just open up group policy. Go to my mapped drives and then update the mapped drive with the new namespace. So instead of it looking directly at the server, I'm just going to link it to the DFS share, go on replace, and then close these. And now I'm just going to log into my PC. Now I'm logged into the PC. If we go to our shares folder, we can see it is the namespace now, because instead of the folder, it's got this little shortcut. And we can also right click the share and go to properties. And we now have a DFS tab, and it shows you which server is actually active. So if you have DFS replication enabled, it'll show you which server, as well as you can set which server you want as active. So now we can go to our accounts, we can see everything inside, we can create files, which will send it back to the main server, and the same as permissions are applied, so if I try and go into any of these, I can get into them all, and if I use my existing security groups, I take myself out of the tech group, so remove me from the tech folder. What should happen is if I try and go into tech, once it's actually refreshed the permissions, I think you actually have to relog, don't you? There we go, so we've got tech. Say we can't access it, it's so no longer have permission. Oh, we can still access the HR and accounts. So if we want to create more folders, so if we go back to our standard share, we can see we've got the shares folder, and we've got the DFS roots and the DFS namespace with the linked files. So now we've got accounts, HR and tech. Say we want to create a legal folder, we can just do new folder, legal. I'll just create a new security group to do the permissions. Add me as a member. So now we can see if we go to the workspace, the legal folder isn't here yet because even though we have created a folder, we haven't actually linked it into the namespace. So we can right click the namespace, new folder, give it a name of legal, add, browse, shares, legal, okay. Now just because this share is called legal, you could you can call this whatever you want. So for example, I'll just call this legal files, and then we'll do okay. So we can see the name's legal files, but if we go into it, we can see it's mapped to the path legal. So you don't actually have to have these names matching up with the file share, you can call it whatever you want, but for uh, consistency you'd call it the same thing so now if we go back to our pc the legal files has appeared but i don't think we can access this yet we'll have to oh yeah we can there we go so we can access new folder we can create new files oh yeah so we can access it but we don't have full permissions because we haven't oh, i know why 
I never actually sorted the permissions on the share. So we get some security. So domain users got access. So just fix the permissions, just log out and log back in, and then I should have the correct permissions. If we open File Explorer again, shares, we've got our legal files, and go in, create folders, create files, do whatever we want. So that is how to set up a DFS namespace and link it to an existing file structure.